What's going on guys? Tomorrow is Halloween and that means we get a brand new card, the Werewolf by Night. Um, it's been a lot of hype around this card. People are saying it's a four star, four and a half, maybe five star card. Uh, so I thought I'd come out and give my prediction, see if I can assess how he'll affect the game. And then we can look back and see if I'm right or wrong. So the pros. First, let's go over what he does, as you can see. He's a three cost, three power card. After you play an on reveal card at a different location, he moves to that location and gains plus two power. So pros right away, you can see he can get to a really high power for a three cost, potentially great value. Three seven, three nine, maybe three eleven if you get the right arrangement of cards, which is outstanding. It's cards have been nerfed for less than that. Uh, also, the fact that he moves make him un makes him unpredictable for your opponent. Having him jump around, uh, it's difficult for your opponent to deal with. And three, he synergizes with basic play. So it's not like you have to do some specific trick or you need some specific sequence of cards to buff him up. He just works with like half the cards in the game are on reveal cards. So he'll just grow with stuff you already want to do. Then there are some cons. Um, Board space will always be an issue. You have to move him, so you play it on reveal at a spot. He moves there. That means there's only two other spots. So if there's two cards already there, then that space is now full. Uh, there's locations, always, you know, Central Park, Savage Lands, the one that makes ninjas. They always pop up. They're just going to mess up how your, your game plan goes. And just if you try to play like a bunch of smaller on reveals, you're just going to clog your board up. Not only that, but there is... You know, the, uh, the junk decks where your opponent sends you rocks, sends you, you know, stuff with the Viper. Uh, that's a popular deck right now. So that could also just be like an in, a built-in counter to this. So it will be an issue. Locating him will be consistent. Um, let's say you want him to be in one spot, but you need to play an unreveal spot, an unreveal card in a different spot. He's going to go to that new location. So it might actually kind of force you off your game plan a little bit if you don't want him to move, but you only have a certain cards to play and maybe it, you, he'll sort of, uh, sort of the way Wolverine and Silk often kind of mess up their own game plan just by moving where you don't want them to be. A little more control than with those cards. Um, but it just adds a little bit of like friction to his game plan. Number three, of course, like any card, the power goes high. He's susceptible to Shadow King and, of course, Shang-Chi. It's a little more difficult than usual because if you move him, so you have priority. You can change where he goes and your opponent has to guess. A um, little easier than if it's like Vision or Nightcrawler or Jeff who moves like right away at the start of the turn. So if they have priority, they can pick him off before you move him. But same problem with any power card. They just... He doesn't, he doesn't do anything for your uh, board except for grow in power. He's not spreading power to other cards. He's not adding other cards to the board. So he's susceptible to the same thing as all of those cards are susceptible to. I'm a little cooler on him than a lot of people are. I, I'm thinking more of like a three and a half star. I will probably would say three. Just like a good card, but not broken. A card that you can play, but isn't going to be a build around. So we'll say three and a half moons. Three and a half moons is my rating. So with that said, I do have a couple of deck ideas that I'm eager to try out. So let's hop over to my collection here. First, I have the, what I call it, the move it or lose it deck, because it's sort of a hybrid destroy move deck. The first synergies that are immediately obvious is that since he costs three, let's find a way to put him into a surfer deck. Um, but also, you sort of want a number of cheap on reveals to help him grow. So Thanos and his Infinity Stones give you several cheap on reveal cards. Also something that surfer decks are often weak with is like filling in the gaps when you're playing threes. If you play them on turn four, turn five, or just your first two turns, you don't have enough spots in the deck to play like cheaper cards that you can fill in those gaps with. So Thanos fills in those gaps. Of course, what did I say? Those gems clog the board, right? So Killmonger, comes up next. He's a three cost, so he works with Surfer. He gets rid of all those little annoying one cost uh, litter cards like stones, raptors, squirrels, things like that, rocks. 
Um, so then, what else synergizes with that? Well, Dakin, he gets the Muramasa Shard, which can be destroyed to grow in power. He's a three cost card. Deathlock and Venom, three cost destroy options. Um, we also have the move side of things. So there's a couple of three costs in Polaris and Spider-Man that synergize with move synergies. And of course, you bring it all together with Craven. You can put him down early. It's a good early option. Um, and it just all kind of rounds out. Snowguard is another uh, one cost on reveal. Produces two three costs on reveals. It all comes together, right? And then, of course, you have Eliath, who's a big on reveal. And sometimes the problem with Eliath is you don't have enough power in a lane, but Eliath is an on reveal and he'll bring the werewolf to him. I mean, you can steal lanes that way if you have enough power, say, maybe your Craven's real big, etc., etc. So I think that seems like a pretty fun deck. Other options would be, um, I said this, this is the purebred move deck. It's just old school move. You don't see much from a lot of these cards now. Vulture, Dagger, people used to play these. Uh, they don't really get tried anymore. Then the move deck is just a sort of self move archetype with Silk, Jeff, blah, 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 that whole thing that I'm sick of. And the idea that Heimdall is a finishing on reveal that will bring the werewolf to him after it moves everything else to the left. So I think there's some synergy there. I also wanted to put one more. Uh, high-end card for this deck so magneto might be there to again one of the things that i thought of is that when magneto pulls a lot of threes and fours to his lane that often means you lose that lane so now if you pull stuff there he also pulls on your side the werewolf so maybe you can still win a lane while disrupting your opponent's board i had one more uh just something i thought would be fun i don't know why it's i like playing with bad cards sometimes there's not much going on here. It's just like the Guardians package. Um, they're all on reveals. A lot of moving your stuff around. Giving. I figured the Goblins are kind of an interesting uh, synergy with him because they don't clog your board. They put stuff on your opponent's board and then bring their werewolf to that spot. I don't know. I named it Don't Build This. You probably shouldn't build this. I'm going to give it a try, though. So that about sums it up for me. What do you guys think? Do you think he's going to be broken? Do you think he's overrated? Do you see any synergies that I did not notice? Let me know in the comments. Please let me know. Remember to like, follow, subscribe. Happy Halloween and keep snapping.